So meanwhile, the project outside building the enclosure was going on. Uh, whenever it rained, I basically came inside and did some work inside. Um, so this is me trying to take it apart and trying to varnish it because it's basically done. Uh, just had to varnish it. All right, time to put the impeller housing back together. First of all, I have to go and trim this uh, piece of metal because it's too hard. For that, I'm just using some tin snips and I'm definitely not very experienced with a tin snip, just glad it works out at the end. Next I'm putting on some silicone around where the metal shear is going to be attached to provide an airtight seal. And on the inside as well to prevent dust from trapping into the gap. Now for the other side, which conveniently you can't see that I'm doing it. <laughs> Putting on some wedding strips to help seal the inlet, or is it the outlet? Inlet. Is a little bit wider. All right, it's good, good fit, good fit. Next is the wedding strip around the motor, and I've got to adjust the camera. Got to put a lock nut in, just to make sure that. Does it come loose underneath there? And this is when COVID hit, and the project was just left to basically sit in the workshop. Many months later. <sighs> Damn. After so long in quarantine, in the house studying, we're finally back out here. It is still an absolute mess in here. Huge mess. So much to do. So much. In terms of assembling the blower, it was pretty much done. So here I'm just starting on the cone, like the actual separation bit, and I'm building a shroud uh, to extend the shroud. I uh, need something to hold it. Hold this. Where's my blood body arm? <laughs> uh. The sacrifices we make. I actually had a bit of a change of plans regarding uh, the design of the uh, cyclone body in that I have made it bigger <laughs> because the original size um, was a little bit too small I felt and also just wasn't big enough so basically I made it taller much taller it's like it's now a Almost as tall as me now, which is pretty tall by the way. <laughs> I also made the cone a little bit more aggressive as well. Uh, not aggressive, should be a little bit less steep. I don't know. Anyway, the whole thing is stretched out. The diameter is a tad bit wider. So I took the time to cut out new rings. Yep, all of them cut out almost, except for the bottommost ring of the cone, which I'm still trying to figure out how to cut it because my router can't cut a hole that uh, small and I don't have a drill bit that's big enough for it. Or do I? Well, I didn't. But I did have the adjustable diameter drill bit back from building the pencil and so I just used that. And it worked just fine. Kind of. Low smoke. Okay. Uh, it's 124. Okay. That'll do. Okay, so I've set it on some spaces and I'm just gonna line up where where the rim roughly touches the workbench versus where this edge is. I'm uh, just gonna eyeball it, should be right. 
that is how much we have to cut away. Oh, just barely toy enough. Wait, is it actually toy enough? I might have to like get the uh Yeah, I need to get the guide up in here. <laughs> Even though it's still not quite there. So I tested the enclosure a little bit with the Dremel so that I can ascend further. Right, that's good. Now it's finally through. <laughs> can only hope now that it's now that it has enough clearance to actually cut it. Otherwise we'll be in a lot of trouble. Next task, the next task really is to um, try and bend this around and fit it into this loop, um, which is going to be quite challenging because I don't have a like a sheet roller or some shit. So just go on to just try it <laughs> and see what happens. So I don't freaking die. Also, I hope I did the mass correctly. They should have about 25 to 30 mil overlap and not 100 mil overlap, like right now. Oh my god. From this angle, it looks like I'm building the, um, that tank thing, the screw tank from Colin Furs. Now that I've done the dry fit, I can take it off and put some tabs on to just help keep it flush. Probably should try and counter sink it as well. See how that goes, I suppose. And then it was time for the other side. Now to deal with the seam. So now we're gonna do something a little bit more exciting. Um, we're gonna finally cut out the hole for the shroud. Where to place it on a cylinder is quite a good question. And in my mind, how I visualize it is that when it first comes in, it's gonna have like maximum airflow versus when it leaves the barrel, it's gonna have like less airflow. And so I guess it will make sense to try and place the inlet at where the fold begins, where there's like the highest resistance so that it has like the highest force to overcome that. And so it will be less likely to bounce around. At least that's what I would uh, visualize, but Obviously, the tendency for like, particles to bounce around also depends on mass. And so, if it was really, really light particles, then if you hit, if you accelerate to really high speed and then it meets with high resistance as well, then it'll probably just bounce off at a really acute angle. So I guess it will be more mass dependent than really speed dependent. I don't do physics, that's just my speculation, but we'll place it there <laughs> and hope for the best. So that's the top cylinder mostly done. So now we get to work on the uh, cone, the bottom cylinder. And finally I can break out this piece of aluminium I had for it's almost three or four years now. It's just been sitting there waiting for this opportunity. And finally, it's time has come. I've already glued up the uh, paper template for this, which was done almost a month ago. It's a little bit falling apart, but that's all right. We'll glue it to the aluminium and then just cut it out and it should be good. Here's me struggling to put the aluminium into the ring, which definitely made the top part look like carbon pipe, don't lie. So I've got some band clamps around it, which actually helped a lot. 
Now the ring is basically free moving. <laughs> Um, so I can easily line up with the bottom edge here and screw it in. Easy. I definitely struggled a lot with putting the smaller ring on. I was trying to get the cone clamped down enough so that the smaller ring basically could be put on with almost no resistance. But the metal was really slippery and the clamps just kept slipping. It's not very pretty but it'll do the job hopefully. Alright, so I've taken off the clamps, uh, and I mean, it's definitely not pretty. Um, as you can see, it's quite wavy, and we have a significant dent here as I was experimenting with the clamping pressure. Not sure whether I'll be able to fix that. Hopefully, it won't affect the flow too much. Um, yeah. The thing that I just want to point out right now is how I missed the top three. These three, I missed them completely. So the seam is like. Yeah, it's just not that, so I'm gonna have to grind the rivet heads off and just do it again. Hopefully we hit it this time. I put a piece of wood across the wooden rims so that the clamping pressure wasn't on the aluminium and so to avoid making another dent. Quarantine that's really made my muscles ache with it. <laughs> After numerous scratch marks, I'm proud to say we've finally done it. I put in all the rivets I possibly can. So I'm gonna attempt to try and fix this dent. I'm gonna lay on top of the block and just hammer it gently. And hopefully it doesn't break off all the screws that I've put in so hard. Largely gone now. Now I just need to try and put some silicone on it and just seal it all up. I definitely think that I'm going to do multiple coats on this. Like, the second car will probably make the tape a little bit wider so that the seam is less bumpy, I guess. Almost taller than me. Almost. Nothing can be taller. Well, now that I sealed up the seam, I'm gonna let it dry before working more on it. Meanwhile, I'm going to make like the angle for the impeller to shoot down the. Uh, um, filter kind of thing, not really, to the filter room. <laughs>